I'm a dyslexic student and I have a 10,000 word dissertation due in three days. I'm a current master's student at the University of Westminster and since writing my dissertation I hadn't realised how much my dyslexia has hindered my reading and writing skills. However, that won't stop me from reaching 10,000 words in this video. Dyslexia is a learning disorder that involves difficulty reading due to problems identifying speech sounds and learning how to relate to letters and words. Ever since I was young, I've had mild dyslexia, which has led to difficulty with reading, writing, and spelling. I often read words completely wrong. I never remember the sentence I just read and I mispronounce words horribly wrong. And so I always avoided reading because I found it so hard. I write in capitals, which apparently is a side effect or symptom of dyslexia. However, it's also an architect's thing to do. And I often muddle up words when I read them. Although I managed to go through my entire degree with almost no reading, it didn't stop me from getting my architecture degree and now studying for my masters. And so fast forward to now, in three days, my 10,000 word dissertation is due. This is the longest piece of text that I've ever written. Previously, I wrote a 5,000 word essay, but looking back on it, it isn't great. It's not great at all. So I'm pretty confident this will be the best piece of text I've ever written. But I'm at the library, I'm gonna do some reading. It's nice and quiet, I like it. There's definitely something satisfying about sitting in a really quiet library late at night. I should definitely do this more often. To give a bit of context, I decided on my dissertation topic about seven months ago and started reading and researching about five months ago. As someone who takes their time to read and struggles to take in information through text, I had to give myself enough time to be able to do as much reading as possible, gather research and also take notes at the same time. And as I was doing my notes and reading my books, I was making sure to reference on the way. That is super important. As you're writing down a quote or you're making note of something, make sure you put the citation or the reference right next to it. And after I'd read about five or six books, I turned all of the notes that I'd wrote from those books into some kind of text. And so technically I started writing my dissertation about three months ago. Okay, so I created a plan from the moment I started writing three months ago. As someone who struggles with their dyslexia, I need to plan exactly how many words I needed each week and gave myself a weekly goal. I put together the simple plan and aimed to write 1,000 words a week, leading to a draft submission in mid-December. More than anything, this just kept me accountable to make sure that I was reading and writing every single week. By giving myself a word goal each week, it meant that I've got something to work to on a weekly basis, working towards that final goal. And I knew if I didn't plan, I wouldn't be able to motivate myself and leading up to the submission, it would have been a complete disaster. With a lot of pain and a lot of dreaded days, I managed to write 1,000 words a week for nine weeks, which accumulated to a 9,000 word draft submission. And although my draft submission was really, really not good, and my tutor told me there was a lot to work on, it gave me a good base and initial structure to build on till now. <laughs> For the past few weeks, I've been rewriting, rereading, restructuring my draft submission because one of the feedbacks is that the structure and the narrative was not quite strong enough. It was a bit all over the place, there was bits missing, etc. But obviously that's gonna happen with a draft submission. Um, so as you can see here, I've been working through lots of different stuff. I've got so many different drafts of each chapter. And that is something that I would actually really recommend is make sure you work through each chapter. I wrote chapter one over the course of two, three weeks. I then went to chapter two and then I went to the conclusion. And therefore you've got a good kind of two, three weeks to read and write and research on a certain chapter. And now I'm at a point where I'm simply just rewriting my draft. Um, and so I've got the base of the text. The foundation of the work is done. One thing that I'm really lucky for or really grateful for is that obviously architecture is a very visual subject so typically if we're writing about something or we're reading about something we're normally looking at drawings built work or other things associated with architecture so it's very visual so actually in my dissertation I'm analyzing a set of drawings or two sets of drawings which means that through my my dissertation I'll be doing my own illustrations my own drawings analyzing those drawings I've said drawings <laughs> so many times in that sentence. So today my plan is to finalize some of my own illustrations um, which are gonna go into the dissertation, which personally for me, as someone who really struggles reading big 
blocks of text like this. If I can sit and just read through some books with lots of drawings, lots of images, and been able to constantly compare between the two, between the text and the image, it makes it much, much easier for me to read, and it makes it a bit more engaging and exciting to write about. So this is the general structure for the dissertation. We've always got on every page, you've either got text on the right hand side and an image on the left hand side. And in some instances, you've got text on both sides, but whenever there's an image or an illustration, it's always on the left hand side. And so obviously, as an architecture student, it's really important to make sure that the dissertation looks really neat, it's really professional in the way it's laid out. So this is kind of how it's looking at the moment. Like I said, you've got all illustrations on the left hand side. So these are some illustrations I've done myself and all text on the right hand side. Um, and as I go through, you can kind of see there's some pages missing at the moment which are meant to be illustrations. But as you can see, it's pretty much there or thereabouts done in terms of the structure and the layout. I need to do some test prints tomorrow to make sure that the font size is correct, make sure the page size is correct, all those kinds of things. <laughs> These are the different test prints and the reason why I did this is because as you can see once you've printed something out you can see how big the text is how it looks in terms of positioning so as you can see with these examples when you've got the text running the full way across the page it just doesn't quite look right I think it just doesn't look as good aesthetically with moving the text over slightly I think that's just a better layout and composition to be able to read as you can see here so for this submission, we've got both a digital and a physical submission. The physical submission is a little bit more lenient. We've got about a week or so after the digital submission to hand that in, because obviously there's time with printing it, binding it, etc. But the digital submission is due tomorrow. And so I don't think there's any time wasting. I could probably submit it tonight, get it done, get it sent off. All illustrations are done, and I'm now just finishing up the final pieces. We've got all the illustrations in, all the figures in, Everything is in place now. The text is done. Everything is done. So yeah, <laughs> we're, we're about to submit. And we've done it. It's finished. Such a huge relief. Um, five or seven months in the works. It's been a long time coming. It's done. And I'm very, very happy with it. By far the best thing I've ever written, for sure. I'm really happy with it. Now all we've got to do is get it physically printed and let's see how it looks. And here it is people, you can't see the title very well on the camera but as you can see here we've got DBoss title on this black and if you have a quick look the prints have come out extremely well. So to give you four tips for writing a dissertation, as someone who struggles with dyslexia or struggles to read and write in any capacity, tip number one, find a topic that you're interested in. Make sure that you choose a topic that you are passionate about or you think that you could spend a lot of time reading and writing towards. This is really important for me. I needed to pick a topic that I found motivating, that was gonna inspire me, and that was gonna encourage me every week to hit that 1,000 word goal. If I didn't have a topic that I enjoyed or I was interested in, honestly, this would have been a complete mess. I wouldn't have been able to get the 10,000 words done because I don't think people realize that 10,000 words is a lot of words. When you start writing it, it's quite daunting, it's quite scary. So make sure you pick a topic that you are interested in and passionate about. Tip number two, make sure you plan well ahead. This was another thing that's really important for me and I do this with a lot of topics and a lot of different modules across university because it's vital to know when the deadline is, when you have various presentations or draft submissions leading up to the deadline and how you're going to make sure you get the workload done in between those times. Give yourself small daily goals, weekly goals and monthly goals to make sure that you're slowly working towards that final end product of that dissertation. Tip number three, start reading as early as possible. Obviously, as someone who really, really struggles with reading and it takes me probably two, three times as long than anyone else, it takes a long time to read. And so if you start early, it means you've got more time to make sure that you're reading and you can take your time with it. You don't have to rush it because the worst thing as someone who suffers with dyslexia is rushing through reading, probably reading everything wrong, misunderstanding everything in the text. And the fourth and final point is download Grammarly. 
Grammarly was an absolute game changer for me. I downloaded it literally three weeks ago, three weeks before my deadline, and it's completely changed the game. It sorted out obviously all my grammar, my sentence structure, my clarity, my confidence in my text. Pretty much Grammarly really, really sorted me out. This video is not sponsored by Grammarly, but I would highly recommend it. And so yes, my dissertation is done. It's submitted, it's gone. And I hope this video gave you a good insight into how someone who struggles with dyslexia can still write a successful 10,000 word dissertation. Thank you for watching the video guys, and I'll see you next time. Peace.